Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson is presented by Actistat, Medina Springs, Ashford Stud, Bloodstock Research, Castleton Lions, Claiborne Farm, Doc Lane's Veterinary Pharmacy, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Keeneland, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, Paul Miller Ford, Pin Oak Stud, Bull and Leather and Tack, Shadwell Farm, Spendthrift Farm, Three Chimneys Farm, and Windstar Farm. Hello everyone and welcome to Thoroughbred Week featuring graded stakes action from Gulfstream Park including a track record victory in the Grade 1 Don Handicap, a long shot winner of the Grade 1 Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap and a brilliant farewell performance by a champion mare in the Grade 3 Hurricane Birdie Stakes. We begin with the Grade 3 Gulfstream Park Sprint Stakes. Katrin, the 2-1 to one favorite, Larry Comas has the call. 44 and 1 for a half mile. Falling Sky is the leader as they come to the top of the stretch. Sing another song. Second, and they've kicked away four lengths from the others. Then comes Reverone running a big one in third. Catron's got to pick it up, and Falling Sky is opened up. Falling Sky was running a huge race. He's four in front at the 16th pole. He's throttled his competition in the Gulfstream Park Sprint. Wow, Falling Sky was huge. 14 to 1, Falling Sky, the front running winner by five lengths over 139 to 1, Narvaez. A 1 2 finish by Keeneland Sells graduates. Luis Saez up in 120 and 3, just a fifth off the track record. Falling Sky records his first victory since taking the Grade 3 Sam F. Davis stakes just over a year ago while trained by John Terranova. After finishing last in the Kentucky Derby, the Pennsylvania bred colt by Lionheart was transferred to George Weaver. A $16,000 Keeneland November weanling, Falling Sky topped the 2013 OBS January sale at $425,000 after winning two of his first three starts for trainer Sal Antonio. Falling Sky has earned $320,000. The winner is owned by Newtown Enterstud and Joseph Bulger. Time for the Built Ford Tough Race of the Week, presented by Paul Miller Ford. Built Ford Tough for over 60 years. Sprinting fillies and mares at Gulfstream Park in the Grade 3 Hurricane Birdie Stakes. Two-time champion Groupie Doll, 2-5 two to five in the final start of her career. Once again, here's Larry Comas. They're racing in the Hurricane Birdie and Groupie Doll had a slow start. She is off last. Groupie Doll is last early. Jamaican Smoke is going out to take the early lead. On the outside, Five Star Mama away running in second position. Distortion is third. Wildcat Lily follows fourth by two and a half lengths. Then Heart Stealer in my due process. And Groupie Doll is very slow to get going early. She's ten lengths off the lead. As they approach the half mile pole, that first quarter was 22 and one. And it is Jamaican Smoke on top. Now the leader by a neck. Five Star Mama second. Wildcat Lily goes up on the outside. Then Distortion Heart Stealer, followed by an I Do Process. And Groupie Doll is still last. She's closer now. She's five lengths off the lead. She's beginning to move up on the far outside. And here comes Groupie Doll now. Still with work to do as they come toward the top of the stretch. Five Star Mama is the leader. Groupie Doll is five wide. She's on the far outside. Wildcat Lily is next. And they're into the stretch. And there goes Groupie Doll. And Rajiv. Mirage lets her loose one last time and look at her take off. She was dead last up the back stretch, but Groupie Doll goes out in glory at Gulfstream. Groupie Doll caps off her brilliant racing career with a seven length victory over long shot five star mama, a one two finish by Keeneland Sells graduates. Under high weight of 123 pounds and Rajiv Mirage, Groupie Doll sprints home in 114 and 3, a 105 brisk speed rating. The two time winner of the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint, making her first start since finishing fourth against males in the Grade 1 Cigar Mile. The six year old Mare by Bowman's Band was bred in Kentucky by Fred Bradley and trainer Buff Bradley. Now owned by Mandy Pope's Whisper Hill Farm, Groupie Doll has won 12 of 23 starts and retires with a bankroll of nearly $2,649,000. Just four days after winning the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint for the second consecutive year, Groupie Doll was consigned by Trackside Farm, Tom Evans' agent, to the 2013 Keeneland November sale. After a spirited bidding war, she was hammered down to Whisper Hill Farm for $3.1 million. Two-time champion female sprinter Groupie Doll, 
the Keeneland Sells Graduate of the Week. Watch Thoroughbred Week replays online at tbreadweek.com. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with the Grade 1 Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap coming up in this segment. Turf fillies and mares at Gulfstream Park and the Grade 3 Sewanee River Snakes. Abaco, the 8-5 to five favorite. Once again, here's Larry Colmus. On to the back stretch they go, and it's Paranda and Jose Lescano leading the way through a half in 51 and 1 fifth seconds. Abbey Street is second, Abaco third to the outside, then Malibu Yankee, followed by Ainsley, and farther out, Caroline Thomas. Riposte is down at the rail, and Nikki Starshine is at the back. Now they make their way into the far turn, and Paranda continues to lead the way. It's Paranda on top by a neck. On the outside, Abbey Street. Now Abaco is sent up on the outside of them. Malibu Yankee fourth along the rail. Riposte is getting an inside run, and here she comes. She's within four lengths of the lead. She's down on the inside as they come to the top of the stretch. Paranda set sail for home. Clear from Malibu Yankee. Riposte is closing, and Abaco is on the outside. They're inside the final furlong, and Paranda's running strong. Paranda from Abaco and Riposte, and Paranda and Jose Lescano wire them in the Swanee River. Florida bred Paranda, the front running winner by two lengths over European import repost with favorite Abaco third. Jose Lescano aboard the OBS sales graduate in 149 flat. Four stakes wins in the last five starts for Paranda, who opened this season with a three length victory in the Sunshine Millions Philly and Mare turf at Gulfstream Park. This marked her first graded stakes victory. A $13,000 OBS April two-year-old, Paranda has earned $448,000 for loan stable. Rodolfo Garcia trains the winner. The five-year-old mare by English Channel was bred in Florida by Kinsman Farm. Florida breads, race him or chase him. To Santa Anita for the grade two San Marco Sticks. Vagabond shoes the five to two favorite. Trevor Denman picks up the call. They head to the half mile pole and now Segway comes to put the pressure on Slim Shady. On the outside, Bio Pro still keen to go on. At the rail, Sea Sage, been followed by Dubai UXYZ. Then we come back to Power Foot. Vagabond Shoes races back in the seventh spot, six off the leaders. Then Utopian, Lucayan starting to make headway on the far side. Temerain is in the pink and Geronimo is still last, has ten to make up. Coming to the top of the lane now, Slim Shady on the inside and Segway. Segway on the outside puts his head in front. Slim Shady tries to battle back, then it's Sea Sage. Dubai U X Y Z down the centre. Here comes Vagabond Shoes now, and Vagabond Shoes is coming fast. Geronimo flying, but maybe too late. It's Vagabond Shoes striking the front. Vagabond Shoes in front as they come to the wire, and Vagabond Shoes has one stylish leave. Favored Vagabond Shoes rallies to defeat 19 to 1 Sea Sage by a length and a quarter. Lucayan third for a sweep by foreign imports. Victor Espinosa aboard in 158 and 4. Only the second victory in eight North American starts for Vagabond Shoes, who captured the Grade 2 Del Mar handicap last summer. The Irish bred seven year old gelding by Beat Hollow was last seen finishing a close fifth in the Breeders' Cup turf. The first of two graded stakes winners on the card for trainer John Sadler. Vagabond Shoes has earned $665,000. The winner was imported by Ronus Racing. Back to South Florida for the Grade 1 Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap. Summer front the 2 to 1 favorite. Again, here's Larry Colmus. A half mile in 47 and 3 fifth seconds. It's an even pace set here by Tetradram, who continues to be isolated a length in front of Amira's Princess to go into the far turn. And then it's Boisterous third, Lochte fourth to the inside. Charming Kitten, Summer Front is still on hold with four lengths to make up. Then comes Imagining, who swung to the far outside, and Nikki Sandcastle is last, and they're coming to the top of the stretch. Tetradram turns for home in front. Amira's Princess second. Summerfront let loose now just to the inside of Imagining and Summerfront ran into traffic trouble there. Now it's to swing outside and Lochte's looking for an upset. Oh, he's run a huge race. He's the longest shot here. Lochte, a massive upset in the Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap. The longest shot in the field, Lochte at 39 to 1, slips through along the rail to defeat Imagining by two and three quarter lengths. Orlando Boca Chica aboard in 145 and 3. 
the first grade one victory for Boca Chica and for trainer Marcus Vitale. After going winless in his first five starts for Darley Stable and trainer Kieran McLaughlin, Lochte has won three of five during the current Gulfstream meeting for Cross Savers Farm. The four-year-old gelding by Medaglia Doro was bred in Kentucky by Maura Gittens and originally sold for $475,000 at the Saratoga Yearling Sale. Cross Savers Farm purchased the racing prospect for $60,000 last fall. Lochte has earned $276,000. The Spendthrift Farm Share the Upside Stallion of the Week is Awesome Patriot. Call today to learn how you can earn a lifetime breeding right in this regally bred, stakes running son of leading sire Awesome Again, new for 2014. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with an upset and the Grade 2 San Antonio Stakes coming up in this segment. But we begin with three year old stakes action presented by BC2A Paste. Reduce the likelihood of tying up with BC2A Paste. To Aqueduct for three year old fillies in the dearly precious stakes. Gracer, the one to five favorite, John and Brielle picks up the call. Gracer takes the field into the far turn. It's Gracer by a little more than a length. Sustainable, giving chase in second. Now it's almost three lengths. Back to Bridget Maloney and Go West Marie. And Sky Saratoga is the trailer. The three-year-old fillies come for the top of the stretch. And it's the odds-on choice. Gracer in command here. Ran a half in 46 and two-fifth seconds. Gracer has opened up a five-length lead. Sustainable. Couldn't keep up with Gracer. Go West Marie is third. And uh, Gracer... Uh, just outclassed this group today. She is in front by 10 lengths and will take the Dealey Precious very comfortably. Odds on favorite Gracer by three Timneys Farm snag and exchange rate rolls home by 10 and a quarter lengths over sustainable. Alex Centro on the board the Keeneland Sells graduate in 110 and 1. The third consecutive stakes victory for Gracer, who opened her three year old campaign with a three link score in the Marshall Stakes at Laurel Park. The winner was bred in Pennsylvania by Russell Jones. It was a $150,000 Keeneland September yearling. Trained by Tony Dutro, Gracer has earned $243,000 for Three Chimneys Racing and Team D. Gracer paid $240 to win and is the Malone's Favorite of the Week, presented by Malone's, Lexington's favorite steakhouse. To Santa Anita for the Grade 2 Robert B. Lewis Stakes. Grade 3 Sham Stakes winner Midnight Hawk, the 6-5 favorite. Trevor Denman has the call. They hit past the 5 eighths and Diamond Bachelor still the leader. Should two keeping the pressure on from second. On the far side, Midnight Hawks right there in the third spot and Candy Boys in fourth. El Nino Tatablaze now dropped back fifth, four lengths off the leaders. Another four to home run Kitten and Cool Samurai. They run past the 3 8 pole. It's still Diamond Bachelor. She too right there second. And Midnight Hawk on the far side. Three of them come to the quarter pole together. Candy Boy still in with a shot from fourth. And now Home Run Kitten starting to improve at the rail. Quarter of a mile to go now. Diamond Bachelor. She too between them. Midnight Hawk on the grandstand side. Candy Boy comes after them fourth. They are homeward bound now. Midnight Hawk, she too. Now here comes Candy Boy on the outside. And Candy Boy is finishing resolutely on the grandstand side. Candy Boy, she too on the inside. Midnight Hawk back in third. Candy Boy and she too going to hit it together. Candy Boy to win it. Candy Boy and Gary Stevens take the Robert Lewis stakes. Two to one second choice. Candy Boy gets up to defeat she too by half a length with the favorite Midnight Hawk third. Gary Stevens, the winning jockey in 141 and 4. After finishing second to champion Shared Belief in the Grade 1 Cash Call Futurity in his two year old finale, Candy Boy makes an impressive three year old debut. Trainer John Sadler is pointing the winner to the Grade 1 Santa Anita Derby. The Colt by Candy Ride was bred in Kentucky by Lee and Susan Searing. Candy Boy has earned $305,000 for CRK Stable. American Produce Records is now available online. Visit brisnet.com slash APR for unlimited access to the pedigrees of more than 3 million thoroughbreds for just $275 a year. Now including SAR stats. Next from Santa Anita, older horses in the Grade 2 San Antonio Stakes. Game on Dude bet down to 30 cents on the dollar. Once again, here's Trevor Dedman. 
They head to the half mile pole, game on dude on the far side and blue skies and rainbows still in front by a length, Imperative now going to kick through on the inside, there goes Imperative to make it three in a line into the turn, they've been followed by Majestic Harbour, it's four back now to Blingo, then comes American Blend and Willie Conker. They are coming to the quarter pole and Imperative's gone through on the inside. Imperative leads them as they come to the top of the lane. Game on dude on the far side. Blue skies and rainbows between them. Now Blingo and Majestic Harbour. They come to the top of the lane. Now there's five in a line in the San Antonio. Imperative the long shot running a huge one at the rail but here's Blingo. Game on dude has backed out of there. Down the centre, Majestic Harbour. Imperative looking to cause a shock on the inside. Blingo's right up alongside. Imperative and Blingo knows and knows in a thriller. Blingo to get there. Blingo and Aaron Grider have won the San Antonio. 15 to 1 Blingo by Windstar Farm Stag and Artie Schiller. The winner by half a length over 26 to 1 Imperative for a 1 2 finish by Keenan Sells graduates. Aaron Grider up in 147 and 4. A stakes winner on turf at Santa Anita at three, and over the main track at Belmont Park last fall, the John Sheriff's trainee was coming off a sixth place finish in the Grade Two San Squall Stakes. The five-year-old gelding was bred in Kentucky by Ben Walden and Brad Ray. It was an $80,000 Keeneland September yearling. Blingo has earned $364,000 for Mr. and Mrs. Jerome Moss. Coming up, a track record in the dog. Time now for the Feature Race of the Week, presented by Keeneland, investing in racing's future since 1936. To Gulfstream Park for the Grade 1 Dawn Handicap. Champion will take charge, the 3-2 favorite. Here's the call by Larry Colmas. They're off in the Dawn Handicap. Uncaptured came out running and goes straight out to take the early lead. And River 7 is away with speed 2, then neck and neck, and will take charge. Is right in behind Uncaptured going into the turn as Lee and Bourbon Courage go up on the outside. And now will take charge will be fourth along the rail. River 7 is in mid-pack early, just to the inside of Romance around that first turn. Then comes Viramundo. Revolutionary finds himself seven lengths off the pace right now, and the two long shots Joshua's comprise and Macho Bull are right next to each other at the back. It's a solid pace. They went 23-2 and two for the opening quarter mile, and Uncaptured is the leader, with Lee alongside in second and Bourbon Courage third, and River 7 just to the outside of them. Romance five deep up the backstretch, and Will take charge is on the rail. He is sixth right now and he's three lengths off the lead. And then Vera Mundo, revolutionary on the far outside. Neck and neck, Joshua's comprise and Macho Bull. 47 and one for the first half mile. And the field rounds the far turn where it's Lee on the outside and uncaptured along the rail. And these two are matching strides on the lead. Bourbon Courage is next. And then River Seven will take charges on the far outside. He's put to a ride. Vera Mundo is in between horses. Revolutionary has a lot of work to do. He hasn't picked it up yet and Lee is in front. Three quarters win in one, ten and four and they're into the stretch and Lee turns for home with a four length lead but will take charge is beginning to move now with a furlong to run. Lee still running strong for the wire. Will take charge is two lengths back and he's determined to try to catch Lee but Lee is too far out in front and Lee has won the dawn under Joel Rosario. Five to one Lee by Craborne Farmstag and First Samurai holds off. Will take charge by a length and a half. Joel Rosario aboard in track record time of 146 and four, a 105 brisk speed rating. A graded stakes winner on turf at three and runner up to Horse of the Year Wise Dan in the grade two firecracker handicap last summer for Al Stahl Jr. Lee is two for two on dirt for trainer Bill Mott. In a seasonal debut, Lee rolled to a three and a quarter length victory in the grade three household stakes. The five-year-old horse was bred in Kentucky by his owners, Claiborne Farm and Adele Del Schneider. Lee has earned nearly $710,000. Joel Rosario with the Safe Ride of the Week, presented by Sally Horse Fans, the safest way to the winter circle. We'll have three-year-olds at Santa Anita, Golden Gate and Oakland Park, plus graded stakes action from Gulfstream and Laurel Park, Next week, you're on Thoroughbred Week.
Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson has been presented by Actistat, Adina Springs, Ashford Stud, Bloodstock Research, Castleton Lions, Claiborne Farm, Doc Lane's Veterinary Pharmacy, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Keeneland, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, North Colony Insurance Services, Paul Miller Ford, Pin Oak Stud, Quill and Leather and Tack, Shadwell Farm, Spendthrift Farm, Free Chimneys Farm, and Windstar Farm. Online at tbreadweek.com.